kissed goodbye. You could have wrote a letter telling me the reason why I got the blues. Yeah, yeah, I got the blues. I get the blues, baby. So I've been playing my guitar all night. IT world after years of bluesing around I'm back I'm back in the saddle again in this video I will be building the infrastructure of a virtualized network using VMware Workstation Pro 15.5.2 and Microsoft Windows 10 Hyper-V on a wireless network the VMware Workstation Pro will be installed on a Dell Precision laptop with quad-core microprocessor, 32 gigabyte of memory, and one terabyte of hard drive. This VMware network will be composed of a router, PFSense 2.4.4, a Windows 2016 domain controller, configured with DNS and DHCP server, Network attached storage, free NAS 11.3 for iSCSI and NFS storage, which can be used in high availability heartbeat data stores. We have four ESXi 6.7 hosts and a 6.7 vCenter server appliance. The Windows 10 Hyper B is on a Dell workstation with a microprocessor, 8 gigabyte of memory, and 500 gigabyte of hard drive. The Windows network will be composed of a router, also PFSense 2.4.4, and a Windows Server 2012 domain controller, also configured with DNS and DHCP servers. We will also build side-to-side -side VPN using OpenVPN for our Windows domain controllers to communicate. As you can see, I also documented my entire network with all the necessary information that will be needed in configuring the systems. It shows the service provider, important information such as DNS, DHCP, wireless router settings, network devices, host assigned IP addresses, storage sizes, VM NICs, and also some reminders so I don't forget. Now that we have all our needed information to get started, first thing we need to do is configure the VMware Workstation Pro environment. On the Edit menu, select Virtual Network Editor, click on Change Settings. and set up a bridge network 
VMNet0 to connect to the external network. Set up a host only network, VMNet3, to connect virtual machines internally in a private network. Configure your subnet and DHCP as required. Check on the box where it says connect a host virtual adapter to this network. This will give your host laptop a VMNet 3 adapter and receive an internal IP address allowing your laptop to stay connected to the internal network when away or not connected to your external network. Uncheck the box where it says use local DHCP service to distribute IP address to internal virtual machines. I have some issues getting DHCP IP addresses for my virtual machines, so I decided to use Windows 2016 server instead. Then lastly, at the edit menu, select preferences, memory, select Allow some or most virtual machines memory to be swapped. Experiment as needed if you don't have enough memory. Then verify that the host laptop get a VMNet 3 adapter and received an internal IP address by running ipconfig space slash all. So far, I have created a schematic of the entire network, documented the settings needed for the configuration, and configured our VMware network environment. Now, we are ready to start the installation and configuration of our VMware network. After two and a half months of research, installation, configuration, testing, and troubleshooting, success was finally achieved. I had the routers, free NAS, Windows servers, site to site open VPN, and all ESXi hosts operational and configured with vSAN, iSCSI, and NFS storage systems. Now, the hardest part is the documentation of the entire process of installation, configuration, and editing of all the videos. Stay tuned on my next video releases. Please subscribe if you find this video useful. I will leave you with all systems up and running with no error.
Tonight, Austin, the 